Swinging for the fences is basically the payoff at the end of the day. Ooh, they just freaking launched right there. Nick. The idea for this trip was to really get the fish whipped up with the normal program, the bait, the chum, and everything, and then present a lure to them and try to get a bite. Whenever you get a chance, get another rod, and there's that other cubby is up there, and get that sabiki out of the way. One of the things that I really love about the Keys, always big fish around, and you never know what's going to swim up. Now, we call these the big brown bears for a reason. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. It's February. Live bait. Pilchards on the flat, a lot of top water stuff going on. Tuna, sailfish, king mackerels on the edge of the reef. It's a great time of year to be in Key West. Good flight? Oh, absolutely. You happy to be in the Keys? Oh, uh, you know me, I love it here. When we fish down here in the Keys, a lot of times that fishing's bait based. You know, to keep things interesting, I try and mix it up a lot of different ways. One of the ways I like to mix it up is I got a lot of clients who like to fish on bait, but throughout the day they like to mix it up and either fish fly or go and fish plugs. We've got this new partner in Nomad Lures, so we you know, told ourselves and the crew this year, let's try to do more surface stuff. Along comes Nomad with a bitchin' set of surface lures, and we add all the elements to make some really cool fishing TV. All right, Ali, let's go way upwind, kind of this way. And try and drift down. How far off do you want to be when we drift down on it? Probably right on. I mean, like 50 yards above it? Yeah. One of the things you have to do when you're fishing plugs is to really get things fired up, I like to have a well full of pilchards. 1.1. Uh, yeah, that's pretty shallow. Now it's two feet right here. Now, just because we're fishing with lures, we still need to build that life. And that's where the bait really is going to play a part for the fishing we did on this trip. All right, big dog, let's start cruising towards these guys right here. One of the things for me that make bait fishing really hard is the tide. Sometimes you get these super, super low tides. The bait gets in there super shallow. Turn it off. 1.4. I see one. That makes my bait catching extremely tough. Trim them up some more, you're in the mud. Catching bait and not catching bait is a difference in inches. Straighten the wheel and go neutral and turn it off. The idea for this trip was to really get the fish whipped up with the normal program, the bait, the chum and everything, and then present a lure to them and try to get a bite. Mud and snapper candy. Those look like all runners right there, Ollie. I'd like to get at least 15 of them, you know? I'm here to make that dream come true, buddy. We're gonna be shoveling this bait over the side at a rapid pace. Eventually, it's gonna run out. Probably gonna be a couple kudas here or some mackerel too that are definitely gonna give us a little bit of trouble. It's nice to have a plan B. It's nice to, hey, we caught a bunch of fish doing this. You wanna try something different. I wanted to make a stop, catch some big blue runners and slow troll them. One of the right kind, one of the wrong. Hoping for some a little bigger. In this trip, you know, we really did have to load up with several different forms of bait. We had to have the chum to get the reef fish going. We had to have the pilchards to chum up the mackerel or the other surface fish. And then we needed a couple of big baits as well. A Little bit of extra insurance, you know, out there on the kite to hopefully reel in some of these bigger fish that kind of cruise the perimeter looking for an easy meal. Woof. That is a nice shark back there. No, oh, there's like six of them. Look at this. Oh, is that a cobia with his head in the, in the uh... Is that a cobia? Yeah, that's a big cobia. It's a giant cobia if it is. One of the things that I really love about the Keys is the fact that there's always big fish around and you never know what's gonna swim up. Dude, this thing, if that's a cobia right here, it is a it's dog. It's huge. 
I think that's what I got. There's three of them. This one here is 50 pounds, Rush, and he's yeah. licking the props. I know, he had his head between the props. I think that's what I got. He's trying to suck down to the bottom. Dude, he is not very good at this job. <laughs> he's missed it, like. I, that pilchard has got some special skills, though. Look at him. That pilchard is like the most aware pilchard ever. Dude, that's a big cobia. Oh, here he is. God, there's a bunch of them and they're huge. I know, I know. If there's bait fish somewhere, there's also gonna be predatory fish. They'll eat anything, Ali. Trickle, trickle a couple baits in the water. Local knowledge is brought to you by Evan Rood, Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Simrad, go with confidence, go with Simrad. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And bdoutdoors.com. There he is. Oh no, I got a shark. I've been fighting the shark the whole time. Whenever you get a chance, get another rod. And there's that other cubby is up there and get that sabiki out of the way. Oh yeah, they're not, they're not shy. I got a light leader on here I'm a little nervous about. In the Keys, more than a lot of places, you've got to be ready for anything. Where'd they go? They're around. They're probably with my fish. You might want to get one of those plugs ready. I got one, I got one. Just tell me where. We're there on a rock pile, dirty green water, in close to shore. Rush had the right rig ready, pinned a bait on, and converted. But you might have to get ready with the gap here. Unless you want me to stick. This is a big fish right here. He's, he's 50 pounds. Now, we call these the big brown bears for a reason. When you put that stick in him, he's going to go crazy. All right, buddy. I don't see the other ones, but he's right here. Can we come get him? Yeah. All right, you ready? Yep. Hold on. Head? Head, if you can. Him. There you go, right off the net. I'm coming, I'm coming. That is a that is damn a donkey. donkey. That's a little better than those ones we were catching before, huh? <laughs> Good job, buddy. Oh, right dude, I've been head. wanting to get one of those for so long. That's sick. That is a donkey there. There's another couple of them back there. Oh, trust me. The head on that fish was just like concrete. It was so, <sighs> Look at that. Such a big bastard. Want Look some help that. with that big boy? He's got some weight, doesn't wow, he? Wow, that's heavy. We were just talking about thick, heavy fish versus- This is a thick, this heavy fish. This is the densest of any fish I've ever held. Not bad These for guys. trying to catch bait, huh? No, I think this is a lot better than a blue runner. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, not really a Florida fisherman. Pleasant surprise. Wow, look at that animal. See, and this is what we don't get on our side. We don't just try to make bait and have a 50 pound Badass fish, swim right swim up to right the Swim right up to you. That doesn't happen. It's either bait or nothing. Yeah, pretty much. I called it too. I said it might be some cobia here. I hate when you're right. <sighs> doesn't happen often. <laughs> How quick the day changes. Now, me and Ali, being that we get to fish a lot together, we always try and mix things up. We're going to go out about 11 miles from here. Okay. We're going to set up, same game, edge of the reef, put the chum out throw pilchards over the side. I'm also gonna put the kite up with a bit, one of those big blue runners. Okay. But what I wanna do, something a little different. We're not just gonna catch the fish on bait. So we're just gonna throw lures all day, pretty much. Dude, I'm so happy to catch a fish on a lure compared to bait. It's just, wow. especially these surface lures, the bite's so awesome to watch. One of the cool things about going to Australia was getting to learn about each lure. So you want that lure kind of doing a walk the dog thing under the water, and it, it's all right if it kind of splashes out a little bit. A little bit different action on the heavier one, huh? Yeah, it doesn't have to be going fast. I'll definitely eat it slow as long as it's got that action. We don't really do a lot of like stick bait fishing at home. Sure. And to have Damon, the guy that designed them, you know, kind of teaching you how to work each one was pretty dang cool. It's starting to get going. Big mackerel right there. Is that that splash? Yeah. Oh! There you go. Maxi or something. Missed it again. That's two in one kick. He didn't miss it. He didn't miss it that time, did no, he? No, sir. Oh, I think I got a bony toe. There's a mackerel flying out of the water. Man, it lit up with a little extra chum. 
Yeah, it just takes a little time sometimes. Yeah, on this trip, I actually ran into sort of a familiar fish. Down in Mexico, we catch a mackerel called Sierra. These fish are a little slow like us. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice mackerel. That's a big one, right? That's a big zero. Now, those have teeth. I think almost took you want to one. hand with them? Yeah, if you don't, or take the raw one or two. Oh, look at that one following it up. Big mackerel. Little, typically caught inshore, quick to jump on anything shiny, a chrome spoon, a lure with some shine to it. Yeah, so that, when we get them in Mexico, that'd be a really good one. But they do get bigger down there. They get bigger than this? Bigger than that. Is that they they get a little here? bigger than this here, but not much. That's a nice mackerel. Look at that purple. Look at Dude, that dorsal thing. He had no trouble eating that freaking mad scad, that's for sure. Down here, we have a few different species of mackerel. We have the Ciro mackerel, which, you know, is a mackerel that grows to be maybe 15 pounds at the max. No, they're cool fish. That's why I was asking today. It's like, I know you get a lot of them. It doesn't seem like they get a lot of the respect, you know? Till, like, you, I even feel like the kudas get more respect. Till you eat one or you catch a bunch of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know, not really the best fighter, decent strike, but really good table fare. The Mexicans love them for ceviche and fish tacos. There he goes. All right, nice release. You know, yellowtail snapper, while they're probably the smallest fish we're gonna chase out here, they are voracious little eaters, man. Once you get them whipped up, ooh, they just freaking launch right there next to the boat. They will come to the surface just looking for that next meal. Oh, oh! One yellowtail goes for it, and then all the rest get hopped up on it. Is that on the riptide? No. No, nope, same yeah. thing. You want the, one of these, ladies? You see some little yellowtail back there, but the bigger ones are further back in the school. Look at the size of that lure. And the bigger ones will come and they'll eat that lure where you can't get a bait past the small ones. You throw that back there and you catch a nice one. You know, there's always a lot of different things going on. You might have a ball of yellowtail behind the boat, and that's what you're keyed in on. But what do you think swimming around that ball of yellowtail? Oh, look at that king. Was it a cooter or a king? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, Can we clear that other line, or what do you want to do? No, you're all right. It might have been a cooter. Seemed like a really soft bite, huh? Yeah, I think it might have been a cooter. Oh, look at that. What's chasing it? Oh, you're about, you might have just got big. Yeah. One thing different in Florida is a lot of these fish have teeth, and you've definitely got to respect them. I saw something right behind this one. I don't think it's, it's not a king. Another cuda? Big old cuda. Double header? Not the targeted species, but fun anyway. One thing yeah, that we don't fish. deal with a lot at home is toothy fish. On a hand with that guy? What are you afraid of? Teeth, the trouble hooks? <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> He's got a hook inside his mouth too. Watch I your know. fingers. Pretty. Big this, look how this one's got like it, it's gray, but it looks purple on the back. Yeah. All right. That's a start. Oh, oh! Dude, those zeros love that lure. Love it. One thing I noticed when we were throwing all this bait in the water and these fish were shooting out of the water and skyrocketing, Ali was a little gun shy. Got your gift. Oh. Re hooked really weird, too. <laughs> Just how you like it. Well, at least not both of them can come flying out. Safe to say they like that lure. It's literally a bite every cast. I know. Free, free, set him free. Thank you, sir. You know, after that trip to Australia, I have a newfound respect for mackerel. I'm just gonna troll this guy back up on that point, then we'll have another drift down. In Australia, we got to learn about a fish firsthand that's called the Spanish barred mackerel. This is definitely the king of the mackerels. Look at this thing. It's a bigger fish than a kingfish. It's a heavier fish than a kingfish. It's got bigger, gnarlier teeth than a kingfish. And they like to bite a lure 
right next to the boat and aren't too worried about where they land. Oh! oh! Yes! <laughs> Do we get that? mayhem. There's mackerel everywhere. Sharks, mackerel, airborne mackerel. Oh, look! Oh! I might be a shark. <laughs> you are kidding me! This is nuts! <laughs> he had stories from Australia where these giant fish, these giant mackerel, were literally jumping in the boat. Oh! Oh, Jesus! Okay, I'm out. I'm okay, out. seriously, holy dooly! I'm out. I couldn't imagine a 50-pound fish jumping in the boat. I've had small zero and Spanish mackerel jump in the boat. And... We both had lures out back. We're skipping the lures in, and this torpedo comes over the back engine, yeah. right at Damon. Like, I'm standing here. It's just like coming straight at me, and, and I'm getting out of the way. This the thing's not hitting me. The had to go is in the water. I had nowhere left. I was like, man, With I'm out of here. One <laughs> sharks. I'm still shaking. <laughs> you know, it's sketchy, but when a 50-pounder comes flying in the boat, you better duck. <laughs> that was, uh, I've been, I've been, that was crazy. I've been waiting for that one all my life. <laughs> oh, my eyes, like. That was just nuts. Like, that was the scariest. Pandemonium times 20. That was seriously one of the scariest things I've seen out here. Oh, my God. This is mackerel mayhem. <laughs>
little bigger than the last one. Well, about the same. Let's get this guy and start heading for the hills. Toothy fish is definitely your department. Oh, I've dealt with a few of them in my time. So crazy, man. We don't have anything like that. There he is. They pull good, don't they? They do. That initial it, run. It's the strike, you know? They that just initial blow run. Up. What an awesome game fish. They are good. They are a good game fish. I mean, they're a lot of fun doing the slow trolling. That's Wind a, came down a little bit and they started snapping. I think one of the things that you're gonna see this season from us is a lot more lure fishing. Rush and I both enjoy it. It's a little harder to catch a fish on a lure, but in the end, a lot more exciting. Oof. Well, Rush, another great day on the reef. I say we head back for some cold cocktails, maybe a mutton snapper dinner. Sounds good to me. All right, let's roll.